In this lesson, you will learn how to model ramps. Click on the ramp tool in the architecture tab. Start by going to the type properties. Adjust the maximum incline length. This is the maximum length each ramp segment can have. In this case, we set a value of 9 meters. Then adjust the ramp max slope. Here, we keep a slope of 112. That means that for 12 meters of horizontal segment, the ramp will climb 1 meter of height. Then set the height constraints by picking the levels and setting offsets if necessary. Go to a plan view and draw the ramp segments. You will notice that after creating the second segments, landings are automatically created in between the runs. You will also notice that there's a small text that indicates how much length you must add to reach the required height. Keep adding segments until you have reached the necessary height. If you want more precise control over the shape of your ramp, you can manually adjust the boundaries and risers. In this case, we add a curvy segment to one of the landing. Then we set a random angle line to the final run. Overall, you model ramps by creating run segments, but you can always customize using the manual draw tools. Ramps are not compound elements. There is only a single element to set. In this case, we add a concrete material. Then you can pick between the thick or solid shape option in the type properties. The solid option means the ramp will be full below, all the way to the lowest level constraint. With the thick option, you can set the thickness value of the material. When creating a new ramp, you can click here to decide what railing type you want to set. It will automatically match the entire ramp on both sides. If you have created a ramp without a railing, it's not too late to add one to match the slope. When creating the railing, click on Pick New Host and select the ramp. Draw a segment and it will match the slope of the ramp. Railings will be discussed in depth on the next chapter. Ramps and rivets are limited. They only include a single material and the slope controls are limited. A possible alternative is to use a floor with a slope. In this case, we model a simple rectangular floor. After, use the slope arrow and draw it inside the boundaries of the floor. Set the top and bottom offsets of the arrow to indicate the slope. Depending on the kind of elements you must model, this might be an easier workflow than modeling an actual ramp. If you enjoyed this video, check out our basics course for Revit. It includes 100 bite-sized lessons to learn Revit in a simple and efficient way. The course includes video tutorials for all lessons, but also text and images to help you understand. You'll also receive the basics ebook PDF. Join thousands of AC professionals and enroll to our basics course for Revit. Enroll now at bimpure.com.